Museum of Becoming is a three-part exhibition that looks for new ways of being human in relation to the non-human world and to each other. It brings together Gustafsson and Harpoyer's collaborative research on institutions, environmental justice, written histories and other species in society. Museum of Non-Humanity is an imaginary memorial museum for the victims of animalization. It is a place for contemplating the way in which the distinction between the human and the animal has been utilized to exploit both human and non-human beings in Western traditions. Often, we think of humans and animals as two totally separate categories. But in fact, humans belong to the animal kingdom. In this project, animal is not considered as a biological category, but a juridical and moral one. Naming someone or something as animal or less than human is to socially construct them as killable. When the American president calls the coronavirus a Chinese virus, he uses the age-old trope of dehumanizing another culture by identifying them with disease. When the governments say that some people need to risk their lives in order to protect humanity, they imply that some people are more human than others. When health officials talk about a virus as something that is attacking us and that we're in war against, they talk about the natural world as if it were an enemy that is constantly threatening humanity. At the same time, the use of non-human animals as senseless material for production in industrial animal agriculture has resulted in climate change, habitat loss, and the spread of zoonotic diseases. Because animals are not humans, they can be kept in poor and overcrowded conditions, which in turn has led to overuse of antibiotics in factory farms and the spread of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. What the pandemic has shown us is how shifting divisions of the world into those who are considered human and those who are considered less than human and therefore treated as disposable is a fundamental mechanism of current-day capitalism. Museum of Non-Humanity explores the complex rhetorical and ideological mechanisms of constructing and legitimizing the categories of human and animal. The exhibition runs through 12 themes that open up perspectives on this division. For example, capitalist accumulation of wealth relies on the concept of resources. Naming something or someone as a resource is a way of making them freely exploitable. A resource is a means to an end, not an end in itself. Through the course of Western colonialism, humans, nature, and other species have been, and still are, reduced to being mere resources. Vilifying the enemy is another way of making them killable. In the Finnish Civil War, the ruling class called the women in the socialist uprising wolf bitches. Defining the killing of the women as a necessary means to stop them from reproducing was a way of animalizing the poor and working class people who were rising up against their oppressors. The idea of killing off unwanted populations reflected the ideologies of those times of racial purity and nationalism. Today, these ideologies emerge in the form of white supremacy and caging of migrants, other examples of animalization. Simultaneously, hatred towards wild wolves and those who want to protect them is expressed in a similar language. The display items consist solely of archival images, quotes, encyclopedia entries and dictionary definitions. The citations cover a wide range of Western mindset, from ancient philosophers to contemporary online discussions. The exhibit functions as evidence of the conceptual violence 
that precedes physical violence and oppression. While the exhibit contemplates history, in each new location, the museum also includes programming that invites people from different fields to imagine a world beyond animalization. In Western history, the model of the human has typically been a white European man. This history also presents humanity as something that is clearly defined and distinct from nature and other species. However, various ways of being human have always existed. The installation Remnants comprises the artworks of 33 artists and two archaeological finds, which are selected from the Ham and Helsinki City Museum collections. The works show the human figure as fragile and indefinable in a landscape dominated by the powers of history, nature and time, which are mightier than the human. The works show that art and artists have always been able to communicate a more complex idea of humanity. Our history has presented humanity as independent and separate from others. The selected works propose that it is more important for us to see ourselves as interdependent and connected to the web of life. The future does not fall into our laps out of nothing. It germinates from the countless shoots and ideas that already exist, even if they are still in the margins or almost invisible. In the video installation, Becoming, 37 interviewees chart the current state of the world and its people. The questions taken up by them prompt us to think in practice about how we are to live as human beings in a world endangered by the old way of being human and what the sustainable ways to act amid the unavoidable changes might be. The interviewees are activists, thinkers, artists, politicians, carers and children whose lives or work touch on something that is in the state of becoming. They contemplate the emergent phenomena that should be nurtured and cultivated in order to build a more equal, more diverse society. The things the interviewees say we should cultivate include attentiveness, empathy, moving away from human exceptionalism and egocentrism, and rediscovering our animalistic side, asking different questions and tolerating fundamental dissimilarity, and being patient enough to stay in the state of not knowing, downsizing, settling for less, self-reliance, but also coming together, holding in common, co-producing, co-governing, and co-owning, making space for knowledge outside of language, and also very concrete things like forests and seeds that don't depend on chemicals. The installation, which has a duration of three hours, does not so much try to make an argument, but to open up a space for thinking together. Thinking of what we need to become humans and what our own answers to the question of what should be cultivated. Gustafsson and Harpoya is a collaboration that was started in 2012. The idea of utopia or the possibility of a different world is present in all of Gustafsson and Harboyer's works.
stehen in 